All right, y'all. Crawfish bisque is one of my all time favorite meals, but I only make it once a year because all the work that goes into it. There's a lot of shortcuts to it, but I like to make it from scratch because it makes it that much more special. So today I'm going to walk you all through how I take the crawfish, break it down. Then I'm going to use every part of this crawfish from the head to stuff it, the shells to make the stock and then the meat to make the stuffing that goes into the shells. We'll even get into how I make my roux from scratch because everything in the South needs a good roux. And I'm telling y'all, it's pressure. Let's get into it. So boom, you want to start off with some good crawfish. I made these crawfish from scratch. I'll link the video to how I boil crawfish right here. But I used these crawfish, peeled them, ate some, and then we started off with our crawfish bisque. Now making crawfish bisque is a process. You might want to take a couple days to do this. We're going to get a bowl that we'll keep our heads in. We'll clean those later. Then a bowl that we're going to keep all the shells in that we'll prepare a stock with. And then of course a bowl for the meat. First, we want to remove the body from the head. Next, you want to make sure that you take the eyes off the crawfish because you do not want it looking back at you. To do this, we're going to put our pointer finger right inside and then we want to pull back firmly but softly because crawfish shells are gentle. You'll all come out. We're going to remove that, put it with our shells, and then we're going to remove everything else out of the head and then put this in a bowl with the heads that we'll clean later. However you do it, just make sure you remove the eyes and the antennas. And of course, you got to eat the big claws in between because it's full of flavor. And you want to make sure you're only saving the biggest heads to stuff with. The rest you can just throw in with the scraps, save the meat. From here, you're probably exhausted. So you can save all this for tomorrow. But for now, I'm going to start peeling the meat from the shell so I get that over with. To peel a crawfish, you want to firmly pinch on the tail and lightly pull it out and you'll devein it that easy. But again, I've been in New Orleans peeling crawfish all my life. So it's second nature. With time and practice, you can do it too. Crack your shell, pull your meat out, and we're going to put everything to the side for tomorrow. The next day, we got right back into it. For the crawfish we're going to use for our stuffing, I use about four cups. You could also use about two pounds of frozen crawfish. Just make sure that the Louisiana certified. But if you can, always use it fresh from scratch and do it yourself. But if you can't, frozen Louisiana crawfish work perfectly fine. Now, a lot of people will tell you to put your crawfish in a food processor. I don't like that. You didn't spend so much time on these crawfish, you don't want little fine pieces. You want to chop it up by hand so you can have nice pieces of crawfish in it so you can feel what you worked for. Again, this is all my preferences. As with all my recipes, you could doctor it up to your specific liking, but this is just how I do mine. I like my crawfish to have a little bit of chunkiness to it. Do it how you want. Let's proceed. Once you've chopped up your crawfish, I'll put it in a food processor, whatever you like. We're going to go ahead and put that to the side and get started on cleaning our heads. Now for the crawfish heads, I had them in my deep freezer overnight, so I'm just going to run some water on them to get that chill off. Now we're going to get a bowl to put our clean crawfish in. A lot of people just use a toothbrush and scrub it, but you can really just use your hand. Just work it around and get all of the stuff out of the shell. As long as it's clean, you're good to go. Go ahead, put that to the side in a separate bowl. And just how I said in the beginning, how there's many shortcuts, just how you can use frozen Louisiana crawfish tails. You could also buy the already clean crawfish heads. They're pretty expensive and they kind of small. I don't recommend them, but if that's all you have, you can use it. And you can also always use anything else you want to put your stuff in. And you don't have to put them in the heads. Now that we went ahead and finished cleaning all the crawfish heads, we're going to fill this bowl up with water and then we're going to add some baking soda to it. We're going to let this sit in the baking soda while we get everything else together. And it'll really make these shells more pliable when we go ahead to go stuff them later. And I told y'all we're using every part of this crawfish. We're going to go ahead and fill up a stock pot with about eight quarts of water. Then we're going to go ahead and throw in all of our crawfish scraps, everything you threw away. Then you can go ahead and season this to your liking if you want. I like to add in a little chicken bouillon along with some Cajun seasoning. A lot of people could add whatever they want, whatever is your preference. However, you want to Google it and see how you make a crawfish stock do that. You can really just use the shells right out the boil and it'll be flavorful enough. We're going to bring that to a boil. We're going to reduce it to a simmer and then we're going to cover this up for at least an hour and a half to two hours to really let those flavors get into our stock. Once all those flavors have come together, we're going to get a colander and we're going to pour our stock in to strain it to make sure that we don't have any of those shells left in there. I'm going to let this cool off and you can use this for so many different dishes. I like to freeze them in quart bags or containers and then defrost them and then use them into any recipe from etouffee, crawfish pasta, and this one as well. I'm going to use this stock for this crawfish bit. So you can use it for a lot of different things. Make sure you save it. Make it once so you don't have to make it again. Now that all our prepping of the crawfish are done, we're going to get into our vegetables. You want to rinse them off and then we're going to cut up our onions and then we're going to put them into a food processor. This part, unlike the crawfish, we can blend down. We want those flavors in there, but we don't need big old chunks of vegetables in our stuff. And I personally like to use half a red bell pepper and half a green bell pepper. 
And with onions and bell pepper, you know you got to come with the celery. The Holy Trinity, of course, has to go into this dish. It's southern. Now go ahead and blend this up to your liking. You could also chop it by hand. The choice is yours. As for the green onion, I don't add this to the food processor because we don't want this to saute with the vegetables as it cooks way faster. And I like to add the green onion and parsley after everything is cooked because it adds a little bit of freshness to the dish. I promise y'all I wouldn't lead you wrong. Cut this up, save it to the side. We're going to put this in after. Now, all of this is going in just the stuff. And we have to do the same thing all over again because the same vegetables are going into our gravy, bisque, whatever you want to call it. Now, if you're from the South, you know all about this Magnolite pot. It's one of those pots that's passed down from generation to generation. They don't even make these no more. If you get a Magnolite pot nowadays, it's just not going to be the same quality. So take these type of things for granted when your parents or your grandparents or your great grandparents hand this down to you because it's special. Now, it wouldn't be a true Cajun dish if we didn't make a roux from scratch. You want to come with equal parts fat to flour. Now, when making a lighter roux, you could go ahead and use butter. Being that it won't have to cook for long. But if you're making a deep, dark roux, you always want to use some type of oil. You don't want to use butter because it'll burn very quickly. And also, never make a roux with olive oil. My go-to is vegetable oil. Now, we're going to let this cook on a medium to low heat. As you can see, it's already starting to get brown. This step right here took about 20 minutes. When it comes to making a roux, you want to go low and slow and never leave that pot because it can burn and you don't want it smelling like burnt popcorn in your kitchen. This is what we wanted. A roux can be fairly easy as long as you're patient with it. Now, at this point, I turned the heat off and I added those vegetables that we processed earlier into the pot. Your roux will get slightly darker and seize up as you add your vegetables in. So we're going to let that saute in there for about five to ten minutes until they're nice and tender. It should all look a little something like this. Now, from here, we're going to add our garlic. You can chop your garlic up. Oh, I like to just use garlic paste because it's very convenient. We're going to add that in there, and then we're going to mix this up till it gets nice and fragrant. You only got to do this for about maybe even a minute. So at this point in the process, I was completely exhausted, and I kind of messed up on this step of the recipe. These are some crawfish from a boil I had a couple weeks ago that I vacuum sealed. You don't want to add crawfish to this this soon because they're already cooked, and you want to add it after the biscuit simmered. I realized halfway during pouring the crawfish in that I shouldn't have done this. So again, ignore that. Add that after the biscuit simmered. Now we're going to go ahead and add in our green onion and parsley. Mix that up thoroughly. And again, you can add the crawfish now, but it's just better to add the crawfish later because they already cooked, as I said. Now you want to warm your crawfish stock before you add it in or there's going to be a bunch of smoke going up in the kitchen. Never, ever add a cold stock to a hot roux. Now, I poured about eight cups of the stock into the pot. We're going to bring it to a boil, reduce it to a simmer, and then we're going to let that cover up and cook for about 45 minutes to an hour. Now, this is the part of crawfish bisque that's so special to me, the stuffing. We're going to go ahead and melt down some butter into a pot and then come with buku of those vegetables that we processed earlier. Again, onions, celery, and bell pepper. We're going to get that coated up in all that butter and we're going to let this saute for about five to ten minutes. After that 10 minutes, you can add your regular minced garlic or again, the garlic paste. Garlic does not take long to cook. So again, we're going to mix that up for about a minute until it becomes fragrant. And now the best part, we're going to come with as many crawfish tails as the Lord allows. I need all that. At this point, we're going to cut the heat and add in some green onion and parsley to add that freshness. And then about a cup of plain breadcrumbs and then a cup of that crawfish stock that you made. And if you don't have crawfish stock, you could always use seafood stock. If you don't have seafood stock, use old reliable chicken stock. It works perfectly fine. And for this part of the stuffing, you could go to your desired uh, texture. If you want to add more breadcrumbs, add that. If you want to add more liquid, add more liquid. Now we're going to go ahead and season this up. I came with some onion powder, black pepper, granulated garlic, sweet paprika, not smoked paprika, and then some Cajun seasoning. Remember, if you ain't sneezing, it ain't seasoned. Add your favorite spice blends and just look at that. <laughs> yes, Lord. Now, once that cools off slightly, we're going to get an oven safe dish and we're going to spray it with cooking spray or rub it down in butter. Now, we're going to rinse our crawfish heads off and you can see how much more flexible it is now that we took it out of the baking soda. A lot of people stuff the crawfish heads by hand, but I like to use a piping bag because it's just simpler that way. You put your hand at the end of the crawfish head and then you just push the stuffing right in it. We're going to overstuff these things. We're not stingy on none of that. This is why I told y'all in the beginning, this is a tedious process. It's going to take multiple days to do. By the time you get to stuffing these heads, your back going to be hurting. I'm telling you, it's toe up. This is why I make it once a year and freeze it. But I'm telling y'all, it's a taste that you have to experience at least once in your life. And all of this work is well worth it. Now, we're going to throw these in the oven at 400 degrees for about 15 minutes. Now, we're going to go ahead and check on our bisque. This is when I told y'all you should add the crawfish tails right now. 
it's okay that I added them in there, but they just don't look as fresh as they would if I'd have just added fresh crawfish tails in right there. But it still does the job. And surprisingly, by the grace of God, they still had a good texture, so I wasn't tripping too hard. Now your gravy should start thickening, but if it's not to your liking, you could add a little slurry to it, which is a mixture of cornstarch and water. Now you could add your favorite seasonings. I like to just hit it with some Cajun seasoning because it has everything you need in it. Mix it all up, taste it to your liking, and then we're going to go ahead and check on our crawfish bisque. When you look at your crawfish bisque, you can just see this is one of the most beautiful things you'll ever look at. Look at that. Just, oh my God, perfectly. It's just perfect. It's perfect. Everything about this is perfect. I took about half of these heads and I put them into the gravy. The rest I froze and I'm going to save for whenever else I want to make a crawfish bisque throughout the next couple of months. We're going to turn our fire off and we can just let these heads soak into this bisque for about five to ten minutes. And after all our hard work, this is going to be our finished product right here. It just looks amazing. I love this. This is my favorite dish of all time. And to make my life easy, I always cook my rice beforehand, freeze it, and then we put it in baggies and serving sizes that's big enough for us to eat as a family. All you got to do is defrost it. And if you're in Louisiana, a lot of things are eaten with rice. So having rice on hand is, is very essential to us. So now all you have to do is plate everything up. And just like my name, you're all done. If y'all enjoy these Southern meals that are so dear to my heart, make sure that y'all like, subscribe, and turn on those push notifications and check out these other videos that I have on hand as well. Thank y'all.